Thanks for tuning in to this installment of Q Chef's video series. Today we're going to be out here at the gardens at Qualcomm Pacific Center. My name is Asia Smith and I am the farm manager for California Farm and Garden. Our company maintains the vegetable beds, herb beds, and orchards here at Qualcomm and at other campuses in San Diego and Orange County. Our company's services also extend to edible backyard garden design, installation, and maintenance. To learn more about who we are and what we do, please visit CaliforniaFarmAndGarden.com or find us on Instagram and Facebook by the same name. Today we will be going over a few practices that will allow you to care for your winter greens well into the late spring and summer season. Here in San Diego, April is a really awkward time in the vegetable garden. Dips in nighttime temperatures make it risky to plant out summer favorites like tomatoes, eggplants, and peppers. But spiking daytime temperatures often lead to a laundry list of issues within the leafy green crops that are vigorous during the cold season. One issue that we see with cold hardy vegetables, your cabbages, broccoli, kales, turnips, all of which are in the brassica family, is bolting. This refers to a stage in which a plant moves from a vegetative phase to a productive phase. You can tell if a plant is bolting when the main stem begins to elongate, when the plant puts off flowers or starts producing seeds. Um, and this can happen during the harvest or way before the vegetable is ready to pick. If you want to follow me, I'll show you a prime example of what bolting looks like. This guy is way past the point of no return. The elongated woody stem, the flowering head, you do not want to eat this chard. Bolting vegetables often cause a tough texture and a bitter taste. It's nothing like the subtly sweet and tender shoots that we're most used to when consuming chard. This surge in growth is caused by a plant hormone called gibberellin. Gibberellin is a chemical messenger that sends a signal to the parts of the plant that control productive processes like growth, fruit set, and flowering. You can compare gibberellin to its human counterpart, the pituitary gland, which regulates the secretion of human growth hormones. If we want to extend the harvest window of the winter and early spring crops, we have to prevent um, the gibberellin from sending out its alarm, its signal. The most effective way to do this is to regulate the soil temperature. You want to keep it cool and moist. The most effective way to do this is to apply a thick layer of finely sieved organic material. We top all of our beds with a product made by GMB Organics called SBC, which is short for Soil Building Conditioner. This is a blend of recycled forest products, vermicompost, chicken manure, kelp meal, lime, and beneficial mycorrhizae. By putting a nice thick layer of SBC on top of our beds, not only do we keep in the soil mo moisture and keep the soil temperature cool, we are also adding a really nice dose of macro and micronutrients, as well as introducing a new population of so soil microbiology in the form of fungi. With the objective of maintaining a cool soil temperature, it's really important to maintain an evenly watered bed. The best way to monitor moisture is your index finger. By sticking your index finger into the soil till about your first knuckle, you can see 
what the moisture content is like. If there's any soil clinging to your finger, you probably don't have to worry about water. But if your finger comes out completely dry and clean, then it's probably best that you wet down the bed. Unlike other veggies, you do not have to worry about overwatering leafy greens. So please don't be shy with irrigation. Because warm weather is not necessarily ideal for these cold hardy crops, your kales, broccolis, cauliflowers, and the like are especially vulnerable to insect damage. The main brassica pest that we deal with here at Qualcomm is the cabbage aphid. An example of the cabbage aphid can be seen here in our stand of Napa cabbage. You can see here the dusty white cloud of aphids. This is no good. This is exactly what you don't want to see. The aphids here appear to be white in color, but younger, immature aphids, the nymphs, are more bright green in appearance. So be on the lookout for both forms. Aside from being visually unappealing, these pests can cause an array of damage from downward curling leaves to yellow foliage to stunted growth. You wanna get rid of them at all costs. Infestation can happen overnight as it did with this Napa. Just to give you an idea of how quickly things can go sideways in the garden, let's consider the life cycle of an aphid. From a newborn aphid to a reproducing adult, that stage happens in about seven to eight days. From there, every week, an, a mature aphid can produce 80 offspring and are able to birth two, three, four generations. So it's, it's some scary stuff. Um, it's important that you scout your vegetable garden for these pests on a bi-weekly basis, especially as the weather turns warm. When scouting, you wanna look at the young parts of the plant, the inner leaves of the cabbage, the forming heads of the broccoli, the tender sprouts on the Brussels. These are the aphids' favorite parts of the plants for the same reason they're our favorite parts. They're the sweetest, they're the most tender, the most aqueous. So when scouting, one telltale sign of uh, aphid populations is the presence of ants. Aphids uh, put out a sap-like liquid called honeydew. This is a sugary excretion um, that occurs when an aphid is taking on sap from the plant more quickly than it can actually handle. Um, think about us humans eating a juicy piece of watermelon on a hot summer day. The juice is running down our chins, our hands are sticky, it's just a mess everywhere. This honeydew is a delicacy for ants. The mouth parts of ants are typically not strong enough to inflict any um, meaningful harm on mature vegetables. So if you see ants on your leafy greens, it's almost a guaranteed sign that aphids are there. The ants are just in search of their sweet, sweet honeydew. Honeydew can also cause leaves to develop sooty mold, which um, if left unmanaged can result in um, a low photosynthetic function and lead to stunting. So how do we control aphids in our vegetable gardens? Well, in any agricultural pest management uh, issues, there are several control methods. There's cultural control, physical control, chemical control, and biological control. Chemical control is always going to be the last ditch effort, the Hail Mary. Only when all other options have been explored should you bring chemical control to the discussion. So let's go over our options. My go-to approach is cultural control. The goal of cultural control is to make the crop environment less hospitable to any pests. 
Most of the time, cultural control is used as a preventative measure. By anticipating insect problems before they occur, um, you can minimize the pest's impact on the crop. One key practice in cultural control is weeding, just weeding the growing area. Aphids love sow thistle and wild mustard, so be diligent in removing these plants from your growing spaces. And that is your first step to limiting aphid presence. Another cultural control is being conservative with fertilizer application. Excessive amounts of nitrogen fertilizer is a breeding ground for aphid reproduction. I know it's really tempting to sprinkle on an extra dose of veggie fur and let her rip, but really you are only exacerbating an issue. So um, make sure to use nitrogen fertilizers with caution and when you can, choose slow release fertilizers. Other cultural control methods are using floating row covers to exclude pests and to favor transplants over direct seeding as aphids can do less harm to sturdier, more established plants. Physical, also known as mechanical control methods, are exactly what they sound like. You physically remove the pest from the plant. This is either taking off one or more leaves that have been infested or removing the entire plant so that the aphids do not have an opportunity to travel to its neighboring crop. A hard, cold stream of water from your garden hose is also a great physical control method. By dislodging the aphids, you are making it almost impossible for them to return to their host plant. And in doing so, by spraying the plants, you're also washing off any of the honeydew left behind. So it's a win-win option. Um, with a lot of veggies, you want to avoid spraying the leaves because it often can lead to fungal issues. But with leafy green crops like brassicas, they have, their leaves have a waxy surface that repel water. So when you spray, it simply beads off. So don't be shy about spraying these little suckers. Some gardeners take a more hands-off approach and let nature do the work for them. This method is called biological control and relies on beneficial insects to feed on the aphid population. Insects like lady beetles, uh, parasitic wasps, and lacewings can be purchased from many online vendors. But be aware, these beneficial insects will only stick around as long as their prey is present. So you have to be willing to watch your investment fly away. Just like you can't keep the bad bugs out, you can't keep the good bugs in. If you don't want to spend the money to bring in these predaceous insects, then uh, you'll have to allow the number of aphids on your plant to flourish. Uh, natural enemies will eventually show up to the scene on their own accord, but it's only after there's a great enough po uh, population to warrant a visit. Finally, if you choose to go down the chemical control route, I urge you to only use organic applications. Inputs such as organophosphates, carbamates, and pyrethroids can kill beneficial insects along with your aphids. This is akin to taking one step forward and 10 steps back. So please do not take chemical control lightly. When you do go down this route, horticultural oils and plant-based oils such as neem and canola work to smother the insect by applying a one to two percent oil and water mixture thoroughly to the undersides and faces of the leaves you are able to uh, to intrude onto into the cell membranes of the insects and suffocate them this is how 
the horticultural oils and organic insecticides work. Now, when you apply your soaps or your oils, they will only kill the aphids that are presently on the plant. So you will have to repeat applications. And although they can kill natural enemies that also occupy the plant at the time of application, you don't have to worry about toxic residues. So any beneficial insects that migrate to the area afterwards will not be harmed. But remember, most large plants can deal with a moderate level of aphid population without incurring much damage. So please consider carefully the option of chemical control. When going into the warm season, follow these tips to extend the harvest period of your cold season crops. Mulch and provide consistent water to your crops and fight like hell against those aphids. Also, consider transitioning your leafy greens to more heat tolerant alternatives. Treat out your kale for Swiss chard. Uh, consider options like Mizuna, Komatsuna, Shingiku, which is a uh, chrysanthemum green or sorrel. Instead of butter lettuces, consider romaine varieties, which are much more tolerant of the heat. Instead of spinaches, that you're familiar with, consider a New Zealand Malabar spinach. It's a great, delicious option. There's a lot of alternatives if the battle of environmental factors proves to be too much. Thanks for joining us today in this installment of the Q Chefs video series. Please come visit us, the California Farm and Garden team here at the Qualcomm Pacific Center Gardens. We're here Tuesdays and Thursdays from seven to three. Come by to ask us questions. We're happy to give suggestions or just nerd out on plant stuff. Thanks again and stay safe.